Hello, this is Jordan, and this is your Precious Metals Market Update. This video is being recorded early Sunday afternoon, October 8, 2017. Thank you so much for joining me today. And in this video update, I'm going to discuss my technical outlook of gold and the gold stocks. And first off, let's take a look at a few things which I believe are driving precious metals right now. And obviously that's the U.S. dollar index and nominal bond yields. And uh, we're going to look at the 10-year bond yield. And the U.S. dollar index is, from a long-term standpoint, it got very oversold in recent weeks. Even on the monthly chart, it became very oversold. And when something gets oversold on a daily or weekly chart, that references days and weeks. Whereas if something gets very oversold on a monthly chart, that means that uh, the rebound from that oversold condition is probably going to last not days or weeks, but months. So we're looking for a dollar rebound for at least a few months here. And the U.S. dollar index looks like it's tracing out a potential head and shoulders bottoming pattern. And the dollar got up to 94 on Friday and pulled back. And uh, right now we're seeing a short-term rebound in precious metals, which I'll get to in a second, but the larger point for the US dollar index is this could be setting up a head and shoulders bottom and the potential upside target from that pattern would be 97. So, and that target could be triggered upon the dollar breaking above 94. So very short term dollar looks like it's going to pull back. And if it does pull back a little bit, it's setting up that pattern, which when it breaks 94 targets 97 and the long-term moving averages, the 200-day, 400-day moving average, are right around 97. So that's a logical target um, for this rebound. Jeff Gunlock, I think, even several weeks ago when he called for a dollar rally, he mentioned it could go to 97. Now, if you look at a 40-month moving average, which I like to do on monthly charts, that's not shown here, but the 40-month moving average, which has been very significant support in dollar bull markets, that has been broken, and that average is in the low to mid 95. So over the next couple months, that average could get up to 96 or so. So 96, 97, that's a potential upside target for the dollar. Now the bond yield, as you can see, the 10 year yield here got up on Friday to about 2.4%. And look, there's logical resistance there. The yield has rebounded straight, almost straight up to that point in recent weeks. So it's going to pull back. So the pullback in yields, pullback in the dollar, that supports precious metals in the short term but uh bond yields i think uh there's a risk along with the dollar that they could you know over the next couple months continue to move higher now we'll focus on the short term here uh with respect to miners and and we have at the top the advanced decline line for gdx in the middle we have the gdx against gold ratio and at the bottom we have gdx and uh if, if you go back to about september 20 or 21 uh or thereabouts uh, the advanced decline line essentially uh, did not make a new low since that point, and the same thing can be said for the GDX to gold ratio. In addition to that, gold against foreign currencies also made its low that day, uh, September 20th. And since that point, the, uh, the miners went uh, lower. They made a new low. Gold made a new low. But uh, the, the real leading indicators here, the relative strength of the miners against gold, the advanced decline line, you know, they were starting to strengthen in recent weeks. So they were hinting that a rally uh, could be coming. And so now it looks like we're going to have the short-term rally. Another thing I should point out, GDX there at the bottom, you can see the 200-day moving average was resistance in April, resistance again in June. Then it became support in early August. Now it held up again at the end of September. So the question with this rally is, can this at least take us back to the highs? I'm not talking about breaking breaking highs, but can GDX rally back up to the mid-25s where the recent peak was? If we can get to that point, that would be really constructive. And uh, in addition, let's see if G the GDX to gold ratio and the advanced decline line, can those get up to the red line resistance? Because if, and we're looking at the top two charts now, if those charts could get above the September peaks, I mean, that would be a really good sign. The first thing is, can you rally up to and reach the September peaks? I'm a little bit skeptical they can do that. But if they can do that, 
that probably tells me that uh, you know maybe the, the maybe you know the the correction that I think is going to continue for a couple more months maybe that's not going to continue, but we'll see. But it, one thing is if the GDX advanced decline line can get above that red line resistance, that would be a very significant breakout, and in the advanced decline line would be very close to the 2016 August high. So um, again, the advanced decline line. GDX against gold. These are important leading indicators for the sector. They're bullish for the very short term, but it remains to be seen if they're going to be bullish for the medium term or if this rally will just last a week or two and then things will roll over again. But anyway, very short term here, we're bullish after that little questionable. Now let's look at gold here. This is a weekly bar chart of gold. We have the net speculative position at the bottom, again, as a percentage of open interest. And gold, of course, rallied up to um, important trend line resistance. Uh, I believe it peaked around 1361, 1362. Uh, the high in 2016 was around 1375. Um, looking at the short term here, uh, it's obviously difficult to do because this is a historic chart. But the key levels in the short term, gold closed Friday at 1275. The rally target is going to be 1300, maybe a little bit higher. I mean, 1307, 1310. I, I think that's, you know, possibly the, if this is just a short term rebound, uh, 1310, 1307, that would be the best you can hope for. I definitely think it's going it to probably test 1300. Uh, gold bounce for a low of 1262. There's really two important support levels for gold. The first is around 1255 to 1260. And secondly, then you have 1220. Which on the monthly chart, uh, I believe, well, not scratch that. Uh, 1220. I mean, there's there's numerous things that show that 1220 is a key support level. Uh, one of them is um, on this chart. You can see I, I did a cluster of moving averages, and you can see that. Uh, let's see, the 80 week is around 1264, so we bounced above that. Uh, the 100 week around 1239, but the rest of the cluster is right around 1220. So there's many things pointing to 1220, and the scenarios here, I think the the bullish scenario would be gold re gold rebounds to 1300, 1310, but then it's able to get above 1300, and then it bases above 1300. If gold can base above 1300, that would be very bullish. That would tell me that at some point in the next you know two, three, four months, it could again rally up and test. The resistance and then potentially break it after that now however the bearish scenario is that gold rallies up to 1300 maybe 1307 but then it rolls over again uh tests 1255 1260 uh loses that and then eventually tests the strong support around 1220 now i mean there's also a scenario where it fail you know it fails at 1307 then it comes back bounces at 1255 again but uh, I just want to give an idea of the potential bullish and bearish scenario. Uh, in any event, I think that gold is setting up for a breakout sometime in 2018. I've been saying this all along. I've said this since the beginning of 2017. So we'll see. I mean, if, if gold is going to hold up well and base above 1300, then it probably has a chance to break out in early 2018. Um, if not, and it's going to fall back and test... 1220 at some point then the chance for a breakout would probably be middle of the year at best or in the you know summer after that so that's how i see gold setting up right here and now last slide we always include this in our charts and the uh, the big basing in miners continues these are the weekly bar charts for gdx and gdxj and again i mean they've really been basing now for almost five years um the upside targets that we had in the last video, uh, given the, the strength that we talked about, uh, were 1375 for gold, 27 for GDX, 41 for GDXJ. Did not quite get there. I think gold got up to 1362. GDX got up to about 25 and a half or so. GDXJ, uh, I think it got up, it peaked somewhere around 37. So we didn't quite go as high as I was hoping for or as high as my targets were back at the end of summer. Um, the real key here for this chart is is GDX making a weekly close uh, at 26 or above 26. That's where the red arrow is. And I mean, if, if GDX would, would be able to make a weekly close above that, I mean, it will have taken out 
uh, that resistance at 25 and a half, which has been very stubborn uh, since uh, the last 11 or 12 months or so. You can see it's now failed at it three times. But the good news is if GDX can rally back up and test that again, I mean, the more times the level is tested, the more likely it is to break. Um, and the, you know, GDXJ is lagging. It's got resistance there at the 37, 38, and then really strong resistance around 41, 42. Uh, look, if gold is going to follow the bearish scenario and test 1220, then the miners are going to test the blue lines, the blue support lines, and that would be a buying opportunity. I mean, what I've been doing, I mean, I, I made a few buys in August, but, you know, I haven't bought anything lately. The key right now, until precious metals look like they're going to begin that major breakout move, until it looks like that's going to happen, you have to buy value with a catalyst and you have to buy oversold conditions. Because when you buy those scenarios, you're, you're, you're buying when your risk is lowest. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm looking for companies that, have, that are trading at a value and they have a catalyst where they can achieve a lot more value in the near term. Secondly, also buy oversold conditions. Um, yeah, I mean, in the last week or so, we got a little oversold, but I mean, this could just be a short-term rally. Let's wait and see. I mean, if this rally over the next couple weeks, if it rolls over again, then around the time at the end of the year when the Fed is going to hike, um, that would be that's around the time when you want to be a buyer. I mean, look, the last three, four Fed hikes, um, you know, I'll do this in a future video, but if you look at, I mean, the, the market, the precious metals, they sell off in anticipation of the hikes, then after the hikes, they rally. So we'll see if that sets up again. If this, if this correction uh, that began in September, if that continues, then we could see oversold conditions reach a buy point sometime in December around the Fed meeting. Uh, if you want a lot more, you can follow all my work at thedailygold.com. You can consider signing up for my premium newsletter. It's only $149 for six months. That's at uh, thedailygold.com forward slash premium, where I focus on market timing and stock selection in juniors. If you want to know which juniors really have the goods and the best potential, consider signing up for my service. It's highly affordable. And also, if you go to my website, thedailygold.com, and uh, near the top there, you can uh, opt in for my free newsletter, and you get my report. This is a subscriber report. Uh, it's my number one position. It's, it's the biggest position I own, and you get my report on that company. Uh, so you can get a sample of my work and uh, the companies that I like to invest in. Thank you again for tuning in. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to publishing another video update for you over the next couple of weeks.